All right, what's going on? So we're gonna be looking at DSCR calculator number two today, and we're gonna be talking about how do we know if we can go 20% down or 25% down, or if we have to go 25% down with the DSCR loan, okay? So it's all gonna depend on this down here, this DSCR, right? Fully amortizing PITIA DSCR. What this stands for is principal, interest, taxes, insurance, and then the A's, homeowners association dues. DSCR is debt service coverage ratio. All this does is it tells you what the rental income is divided by the debt of the property. Okay, and then if it's over one, that means the rents are you know, greater than the debt. And that's what we're trying to aim for. So when we're trying to go 20% down or 80% LTV, we need to look at the long-term market rents as if we're renting to a single family, not, not pack split, not Airbnb, not short-term rental, like none of that stuff. We want to go 20% down in this example when we're buying a pad split right we want to know um and and this is for an occupied pad split <clears throat> for buying an operational and occupied pad split and we want to know if we can go 20 percent down then we need to use the long-term market rents in order to go 20 percent down and i'll explain why we can't use pad split market rents for 20 percent down in a second so let's start off first how do we calculate the DSCR? So we get the as is value, you know, or the ARV, whatever the ARV stands for after repair value. And let's say it's worth 260. So you're going to buy the property. It's 260,000. We're trying to get 80% or 20% down, right? 80% LTV, which is loan to value, 20% down payment. If there's an 80% LTV interest rate, the higher the loan to value, the higher the interest rate. Um, you know, this is I think this is pretty standard. It'll probably be like eight or 8.25. And we're in March 9th of 2024. So that's just the reality of the current situation. So that means your down payment, 52,000 and your loan amount, 208,000. Um, you're, there's no, this is fully amortizing for 360 months. There's no interest only period. So this is where we're using the monthly market rent. Um, and the way I get that is rentometer. I go to rentometer and I plug in the address. Um, even though this will say it's a 10 bed, four bath, that's not in reality what's going to happen when the appraiser goes in there. You know, they're not going to call, not going to call it a 10 bed, four bath. Um, they may call it, they, they may look at more of like what the county record shows or which of these, which of these rooms actually have reach in closets instead of just armoires. So more realistically, if you just search the address, you'll see that it's really a three bed, three bath. And then it was converted into a 10 bed, three bath, which is fine, right? We can still buy, we can still buy this property. It's just, we're not gonna be able to price it out on the rents for long-term single family home as necessarily a 10 bed, three bath. So here, you know, I'm not putting six bed or 10 bed here, right? Cause that would skew the numbers. If you did it like that, I mean, it's still not that big of a difference. 2100 so versus three bed. Unfortunately, over here, you can't really go more than one and a half bath. I don't know why. It's just how they do things. So now it gives you this report, tells you the average, the radius is 1.5. Many times they're only looking, you know, max a mile. And so if you go a mile in radius, you see like average is 1861 on the high end you're at 1993 or you know maybe 2000 so that's how i got uh, i'll test this out at both so if i change this to 1861 and i'll say okay shoot well what's what's maybe worst case scenario comes in at 1800 it comes in at 1800 we're now below one so then i'm like oh shoot so i know at least i'm um, maybe let's try 1900 you know if, if we can get 1900 super super tight but if we if we can hit that, we can go twenty percent down, right? If we we're at eighteen hundred, what I probably suggest is buying down the rate. You know, trying to see if can we buy this rate down, right? And then what I'd probably suggest then is increase your deductible on your insurance. Try to get this down a couple bucks or something. See, but if if you do all that, then yeah, it, it kind of sucks. Maybe you put a little bit more of a down payment. Right, put another one percent down, and then now you're at this DSCR ratio of one. And then this is how you massage it to work. But let's just assume 
that were at the 2000 or not, at least yeah let's say 2000 or on the higher end so then how do i estimate the taxes because we don't get we don't get the market rents until we get the appraisal report which is when we're already in escrow and we don't get the taxes until we get the property tax bill which is when we're already in escrow same thing with insurance right we get the homeowner's insurance premium from the insurance agent so i have to run estimates i use this tool called smartasset.com forward slash taxes and they have these property tax calculators you just change the state here and you put in the zip code then you put in the value of the property and then it'll give you the estimated property tax for purchases this isn't necessarily going to work for refis but for purchases it'll definitely work refinances you should already have your property tax bill and we just work off of that but for purchases this is what we do so then it's 2652 so in here i'm doing 2652 divided by 12 to get the monthly that's that and then i have another tool i use which is called this is moneygeek.com forward slash insurance home insurance calculator georgia you put your age your credit score your dwelling coverage deductible you know and then um i know deductibles can go up to like five thousand so liability coverage personal property so i'll put 110 there right on average so i put 110 boom there's no hoa dues on this property so we're just looking at the monthly market rent divided by the principal and interest and the taxes and insurance so piti <laughs> And that's how we get the 1.06. So as of right now, if we bought this property for 260,000 and the monthly market rents came back at 2000 bucks for a single family home and we got the property taxes to match up like this and insurance, we could go 20% down. Yep, totally makes sense. And this is kind of what I'm seeing where the pro where once the values start to go above 260, it becomes a, a little bit harder. You know, we're still at 1.02, so go to 280 now you're at 0.99 once you're in the 300s you know because your property taxes are only going to go up right and your insurance it's not to say that your monthly market rents will not always go up just because everything else goes up so this is the calculations i'm doing to figure out if we can go 20 percent down or if we have to go 25 percent down so because people ask me like why can't we just use pat split market rents the answer is yes, we can use pat split market rents. But in, if we use pat split market rents, we have to treat it like a short term rental. And if we treat it like a short term rental because it's a rent by the week model, even though pat split gives us a 12 month lease, if you read the lease, the lease says that the money's not guaranteed. So it doesn't, it doesn't, it's useless for us. You know, it, it protects pat split. But for us, truthfully, it doesn't really help us. Um, it doesn't help us on evictions. It doesn't help us to get loans. So we can't use, we can't use a lease for anything. And so if we treat it like a short term rental, which is a rent by the week model, then we have to go 75% down. I'm oh, sorry, 25% down, 75% LTV. So this is massively beneficial, especially in when we're talking about places in Florida or Arizona or Vegas, where the property values are more like 400,000. You know, 400, I think I'm doing one right now. Actually, it's like 580,000 uh, to cash out refi. And maybe you're getting 3,000 bucks in rent, but your DSCR is so, so far below one. We can still do this, but your rate's going to be terrible. If you're below one, your rate, you know, can jump up to like 8.875, where if you use, and you can see, right, we're, we're we can go all the way down to a 0.75, but, and we can still be at 75% LTV. Um, but if we're using pad split market rent, maybe our rate can still be in this 8.125 range, or maybe even just eight, cause we're at 75% LTV. Um, and then our monthly market rent, we can now take this to like, you know, 5,000 bucks or something or 6,000, whatever it is. You can see our DSCR is like massively improving. Um, okay. Just wanted to share that with you guys so you can understand how I approach buying a converted pad split with the DSCR loan. I first try to see if we can go 20% down if you want max leverage. Otherwise I explain that to use pad split market rents, we have to go 25% down because the lender requires a haircut on the LTV. You know, you can't get max leverage 80% if we're going short term rental. The other thing to note is you do need a minimum of 700 credit score to even use the short term rental income. Okay. All right. Hopefully this explained um, just give you a good understanding 
of how the DSCR ratio works, how we calculate it, and then how it helps us determine if we can go 20% down or 25% down. All right, have a good day. Bye.